Dawn of War 3. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words of the Gits. Step into a brutal battle between three warring factions in Dawn of War 3. You will have no choice but to face your foes when a catastrophic weapon is found on the mysterious world of Archeron. At last, here it is guys, the third instalment of the Dawn of War franchise, which I absolutely love, well, I didn't absolutely love, let's be honest, but the first one, the first Dawn of War, was brilliant. The RTS game, I loved the add-ons for it, I think it was the Winter Assault was one of them. Absolutely brilliant games, played them to death, absolutely played them to death. Then Dawn of War 2 came along, which was more of a RPG, to be honest with you. It took away the whole base building, I mean it, the base building wasn't exactly huge anyway but it's still a great thing to have and they took that away and they reduced the amount of units and it all became a bit me, you know and I didn't like Dawn of War 2 at all, just I hated Dawn of War 2 to be honest guys, I'm not a massive massive 40k fan, I don't, I mean I, I am a fan but I, I don't go and paint miniatures with a blue haired girlfriend wearing a marble t-shirt, I don't do any of that, I just kind of like the whole you know but i was dead excited about dawn of war street because the word on the street was that it was returning to its roots how many times you heard that guys and how many times you've been disappointed well here's another one so they've took bits from dawn of war one dawn of war two and then they've added bits from daughter the problem is they've took the wrong bloody bits um you've got base building back which is a plus so you've got base building back um so that is a plus but I'll start off with what the, the single player is, the campaign. You've got the Space Marines, you've got the Orcs, and you've got the Eldar. And what I like about the campaign is you start off on mission one is the, is the Space Marines. And the, the story is, like I said in the, in the words, there's a, a weapon being found on this planet in the form of a spear. And the story is about who gets control of that. It's kind of like, you know, we've seen it all before kind of story. But it starts off with um, the Space Marines. And there's a little bit of a disagreement going on there because they've discovered this kind of artifact thing. So they're going to look for that. The Orcs, then on mission two, you play the Orcs who don't give a f**k really. They're just kind of like, what the hell's going on here? Um, oh, there's some space marines knocking about why are they here sort of thing. And the Orcs is just too busy fighting amongst themselves for power, which is so funny. So you play them, but then you play the Eldar in a mission who are trying to also get the hands on this artifact and it's kind of like all oh, right then you play in the space marines again and so you're kind of going around taking turns so to speak of playing each faction in the same story it's kind of like you've got a base that you're fighting over with you controlling one faction fighting another and then the next mission will be the other faction coming in to, to clean up you know, it's it's kind of good the way they do. I like it. I really do like the way they've done that. It's it's really good because it keeps you hooked all the way through because you want to know what happens in the story, uh, which isn't that bad. Um, but you're playing it from the different viewpoints all the time, which is really really good. I love the way they've done that. The trouble with the game is the gameplay is not brilliant. It's not it's not bad. It's not a bad game. Don't be put off by the mixed reviews on Steam and all the shite that it's getting. Um, I think they're mainly from Die Hard, Dawn of War, you know. The way Marvel t-shirts and the girlfriends have got blue hair. I think it's them lot, really, that's complaining. Um, there'll be lots of miniatures badly painted this weekend. This is what I think of the combat. The problem is, it's very micro -managey. This is from, a, a, I'm a huge RTS fan. And what I don't want to be doing in an RTS is controlling 20 units at a time i don't want to be doing that and a lot of the units main power comes from a special move that it has to be clicked to do so for example you might have a unit that can leap onto the top of a group of enemies smash them around and then do a whirlwind that's two different powers so you have to physically select by either clicking or pressing your group button to get that unit then you have to click on the unit's ability click where you want it to go then click on the next ability click where you want that to go and all that takes time now you've got another 20 units in combat at that exact time fighting in this big battle a lot of them also have 
these abilities and you've got to click on each one right i want you to fire there i want you to fire that i want you to do that ability there i want you to heal over there i want you to put a force field around there and it just doesn't work it doesn't work in an rts game because i've got better things to do i mean one of the ones i had me artillery um we whirlwind artillery i had them bound to key number five and i had two of them and what they were doing i was bringing them up behind me main assault and it, trying to fire their artillery missiles but as i pressed five and then i pressed q which was the the first ability it would only fire one of the bloody artilleries i had to manually go and do the other one it's it's kind of hard to to play i find it a pain in the f***ing ass to be honest guys it's it's a pain to play it i'd much rather have Put the ability on auto so that it would just do them but i guess you can't with certain abilities because who would it target you know which group would it jump into so it's it's kind of they've tried to have an rts but they also want this kind of rpg tactical controlling micromanaging of your units and you can't have both because if you do have both this is what you end up with a bit of a mess and that's a shame because i do enjoy playing the game it isn't a bad game it's just frustrating that's the problem it looks gorgeous and it plays really well i mean i'm loving the, the campaign it's about 17 hours long the campaign um if you take your time in the in the missions each mission the 17 missions and the last between um half an hour and an hour depending on what difficulty you, you've got it on another thing i don't like about it is a lot of the units that you get are locked behind an in-game paywall where you use in-game currency that you amass by doing missions and skirmishes and multiplayer matches and the problem with that is they've put all the good units there they're like i mean even the storm boys are bloody elites i mean what the f I mean, why are they elites they shouldn't be elites terminators they're elites i don't think they should be you know i think it just should be the the main guys but it's got a lot of the units that i love to play with in dawn of war one are now locked up and i have to unlock them by using skulls that you get and i mean it is nice to have a progression system and i agree that this game should have a progression system but i don't think it should have been that kind of a progression progression system we also have which are is a really nice touch you have these abilities that you can again buy the behind a paywall it's all in game currency currency there's no micro transactions that involve cash but you've got these other abilities they're like doctrines where you can um alter what your baseline units do which is really good because you can give them extra abilities you can give buildings extra abilities like um anybody who comes within range of this building will get healed or you can have uh, your turrets to have to have more damage and, and a healing aura around them as well speaking of turrets there's no defensive turrets whatsoever for the um space marines which is kind of stupid you can't defend your base which is up and that comes into the next bit that i want to talk about which is the game objectives i'm talking about skirmish and multiplayer here the problem with it is there's only one game mode <laughs> just one game mode guys and that is pretty much inspired by dota every faction has a core you've got a few towers that are defending the core and you can't kill the core until you get past the towers to get past the towers you have to take down the shield generator so the first thing is take out the generator then take out the towers then take out the core that's the only game mode in this uh, there's no kind of resources to harvest as in like in command and conquer kind of thing with fields and stuff where you go what these are you have set places on the map that can be defended and you can put a turret on them and that's pretty much it and i found that pretty lacking for a triple a game i really did i wanted team deathmatch modes i wanted dominion i wanted a lot of different modes to play because one when i play a game like this i absolutely love um skirmishing with friends co-op skirmishing i love it and you get eight maps i think i think it's about eight maps in one game mode i mean it's still fun and the enemy ai is still good but eight maps that's not good enough I'm sorry, that is just not good enough for a AAA game. We should have a lot more than that. Um, that's just bullshit. There's a lot of people saying that this is kind of designed for esports. I, I really hope not because that's fucked up. I mean, who gives a fuck about esports? Who gives a fuck about esports? I don't give a fuck about. I don't know anybody personally that gives a fuck about esports. 
Honestly, I'd rather have my testicles served to me on cocktail sticks than watch an eSports match. I really, really would. There's nothing in eSports that appeals to me whatsoever. It's just, you get these stupid commentators, you get a, a hot chick with big tits who doesn't know f***ing anything about gaming at all. She'll just sit there, she's there for people to go, Wow, look at her, she's got boobs. Then you get another guy sitting next to her with a hairstyle that looks like point on his head, where his head, what the f***? with all them hairstyles look like f***ing Tintin and they sit there totally over exaggerating the hype totally over exaggerating what they're seeing the commentators are awful trying to make it sound as if it's the most exciting thing in the world and it's just not you've got these two f***ing people with the thousand yards there I move me tank to there move him to there move him to there and the commentators go oh yes he's, he's, he's moving his tank he's moving hey man do you think he's going to move his tank and go into pits moving on that yeah I think he is man I think he's going to go over to Jesse hi I have pooped I have I don't think any game should be made for esports. I just don't. I think they should be made for people who enjoy the games. And developers need to start listening more to the fans of the games. I mean, I don't think anybody asked for this. I, I literally don't think anybody asked for this. There was plenty of people asking for a Dawn of War with a, the cover system from Dawn of War 2. Because let's talk cover system for a second. It's awful in this game. The cover system in Dawn of War 3 revolves around these little areas on a map that you can walk into and, a, and a, you capture and then a little shield pops up. And once the shield's popped up, the only people that can go and take it back are people that don't have ranged attack. I, I get what they're trying to do, but f*** me. How boring is that? So there you go, guys. Dawn of War 3 is a toughie. It's a toughie because it's not a bad game. It isn't shit. This is not a bad game. I'm loving it. I'm having f I'm not loving it. I'm having fun in it. I'm going to play the skirmish a lot more. I'm going to finish the campaign off. Uh, I'm going to get me money's worth out of it. I really am. But it's just... It's another one. Of, it's, I'm seeing this a lot this year. It could have been so much better. What the actual... What the actual, guys? What's going on here? Short-sighted devs? I think so, guys. I'm going to have to thumb it down i think i'm gonna have to thumb this down which is a shame because it could have been so much better but the micromanagement the lack of game modes the lack of maps in multiplayer the fact that a lot of good units are hidden behind a paywall albeit an in-game paywall was just was just an orc too far guys such a shame